Hey, welcome back. This is FreeCodeCamp.org. Your imagination is a preview of life's coming attractions. Albert Einstein. Right now, we're working on responsive web design certification. And we are learning typography by building a nutrition label. Typography is the art of styling your text uh, to be easily readable and to suit its purpose. In this course, you're going to use typography to build a nutrition label web page. <clears throat> You'll learn how to style text, adjust line height, and position your text using CSS. Um, guys, if you like the content and you're learning code, subscribe, follow along, and learn how to code with me in 2024 this year. All right, step one. Here's a preview of what we will build. Start coding. All right, step one. We provided the basic HTML boilerplate for you. Create an H1 element within your body. Okay. All right. And give it the text nutrition facts. All right, that's it for step one. On to step two. All right, below your H1 element, add a P element with the text eight servings per container. All right, that's it for step two. On to step three. Mm. All right, add a second paragraph element uh, with the text serving size two third cup or 55 gram. All right, congratulations. That's it for step three on step four. <clears throat> Within your head element, add a link element with a rel attribute set to style sheet. Okay. And an href equal to this font link. Uh, this will import the Open Sans font family with the font weight of 400, 700, and 800. Also add another link to your CSS styles file. So this is the second link. You're still going to have a rel equal to style sheet. Um, and then it's going to have an href equal to styles.css. <clears throat> All right, perfect. So for step four, on to step five.
All right, step five, create a body selector and give it a font family set to open sans uh, with a fallback font of sans serif. So we'll do a body selector and we're going to do font family and it's going to be set to open sans. All right, oh, should be a capital S. And the backup font is going to be sans serif. I remember the fonts with the spaces in the name must be wrapped in quotes. <clears throat> That's up. Oh, sorry, code is by selector chef font family print set to open sans. Oh. Didn't capitalize the O. All right, that's it. Uh, that's it for five on step six. All right, step six, the font is a bit small. Create an HTML selector and set the font size to have 16 pixels. All right, congratulations, your code passes. On to the next one. All right, step seven. Wrap your H1 and your P elements in a div element and give that div a class attribute of a label. All right, your code passes. That's it for step seven on step eight. All right, step eight. Borders can be used to group and prioritize content. Create a label selector and give it a border set to two pixels solid black. That's it for step eight. On to step nine. All right, step nine. Good use of white space can bring focus to important elements of your page and help guide users' eyes through the text. Give your label selector a width property set to 270 pixels. All right, that's it for step nine. On to step 10. <clears throat> Getting a little delay in my browser tonight. All right, give your label selector a margin property set to 20 pixels audio or auto. All right, margin 20 pixels auto and padding zero seven pixels. OK. 
Okay. Let's check our code. All right, our code passes on to step 11. <laughs> step 11. If you inspect your label element carefully, or if you inspect, inspect your label element with your browser's developer tools, you may notice that it's actually 288 pixels wide instead of 270. So let's inspect, and you'll see the label is 288 instead of 270, like we had set. Where do we set 270? Right here. We set the width to be 270, but it's 288. Um, this is because by default, the browser includes the border and padding when determining the element's size. To solve this, reset the box model by creating a star selector or a universal selector. All right. And giving it a box sizing, sizing property of border box. Box sizing border box. And you saw it change a little. Let's see what it is now. This one. Now it's two seventy. Yep. All right. On to the next step. Step twelve. <clears throat> All right. Remember that the use of the H1, H2, and similar tags determine the semantic structure of your HTML. However, you can adjust the CSS of these elements to control the visual flow and hierarchy. Create an H1 rule and set the font weight property to 800. This will make your H1 text bolder, and it did. That's it for step 12 on step 13. All right, step 13. Give your H1 selector a text align property of center. All right, congratulations. That's it for step 13 on step 14.
All right, step 14, fine tune the placement of your H1 by giving it a top and bottom margin of negative four pixels. And a left and right margin of zero. All right. That's it for 14 on the 15. All right, create a paragraph selector and remove all margin. All right, that's it for step 15, on to step 16. All right, lines can help separate and group important content, especially when space is limited. Create a div element below your H1. And give it a class attribute set to divider. All right, that's it for step 16 on the 17. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, step 17, create a selector for your new divider class. And set a border bottom property of one pixel solid and then 888989. Okay. Also give it a top and bottom margin of two pixels. Should not have any left or right margin. All right, that's it for 17 on the step 18. All right, the letter spacing property can be used to adjust the space between each character of text. Give your H1 selector a letter, letter spacing property and set it to 0 0.15 pixels to space them out a little bit more. All right. So for 18 on the 19. <clears throat> All right, step 19. Nutrition labels have lot a lot of bold text to draw attention to important information rather than targeting each element that needs to be bold. It is more efficient to use a class to apply a bold styling to every element. Give your second paragraph element a class attribute set to bold.
All right. That's it for step 19 on to step 20. Step 20, your new class does not have any styling yet. Create a bold selector. All right. Um, and give it a font weight of 800 to make the text bold. Go ahead and remove the font weight property from each one as well. All right, and that's it for step 20. That's the last step I'm gonna cover in this video. Uh, next video, we're gonna start on step 21. If you like the content and you're learning how to code this year, follow along with me in 2024. Subscribe and learn how to code with me. All right, I'll see you in the next step, step 21.